This is Dulcimer Haven night, so you don't see too many Dulcimer players, period, in Nebraska. So you got two of them here tonight. Uh, Carolyn came down uh, a week ago in Lincoln and did a hammer Dulcimer clinic, and that went well as, as I could expect. Uh, we had three people show up, including me, so out of a population of 200. No, there was three plus you. Three plus you, yeah, so. Four. Yeah, you would think it's it the good. city of Lincoln, so I'm, I'm hoping to develop some more interest of the, of the crazy instrument that also so. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sing one first, and I usually use this, uh, this mic here for that. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's like, like worse on cell phone sometimes. Sometimes I, when I put this thing on, I feel like asking if you would like to supersize your prize. <laughs> so, this first song is, uh, is a tune I wrote about my little fun little haven where I grew up down there in Farmer's Valley. I seem to write a lot of music about that because it, it, it really meant a lot to me and I'm, I'm away from it now. Uh, and I've been away from it several times, so, uh, but uh, it seems like that's, those are the times you miss it the most. And so I wrote this tune and it talks a little bit about uh, several neat things about the place um, um, I actually am still the mayor of Farmers Valley. Anybody knows that? Um, <laughs> I just proclaimed myself.
brings back all kinds of cool memories this afternoon. I played a mother-daughter tea over in Grand Island for, uh, for a retirement home, so that was a lot of fun. So you can see all these old gals with their, with their young moms. Is it? Cool. Well, this next song is a song I recorded for uh, a mommy, a new mommy, back about 28 years ago now, probably. Well, that's when I wrote it. That's for my niece, Jenny. And uh, it was kind of neat because when I, when I wrote it, of course, I was quite young and didn't do any recording back then. But when I went to record it, we had uh, my youngest niece at the time, Olivia, uh, was about six months old. So we got Grandma in the studio with our old rocking chair. And so i got a little snippet of that. I'll play at the beginning of this song here. But the song's called Four Jenny.
growing up as a kid, I was a, I'm a blacksmith. My family is a blacksmith, and so we evolved as the farmers. We could fix anything they would break. You know, way back then, it was just shooting horses and making bolts and stuff to fix wagons. But as the farmers learned to break a lot of other things, we progressed right along with them. But I always knew that right in the center of the Nebraska flag stood a blacksmith. But you'd be amazed. I go around and I'll ask people, does anybody know who's standing in the center of our flag? And almost always somebody will say the sower, or they'll say Herbie Husker, <laughs> or something like, something like that. And almost no one knows that there's a blacksmith standing in the middle of our flag. So it spurred me to uh, do a little investigation of why the blacksmith was there. And all of a sudden, after I compiled a whole bunch of information, I thought, you know, if I do a musical presentation of this uh, show, uh, it'd be a cool thing for the school. So I'm working on that, and I've presented it a couple of times, but it's still in its infancy. But here's a song that I chose to do for the kids. Now, some of the icons on the flag are, of course, the blacksmith. Uh, there's a, a big banner up the top that says equality before the law. Uh, there's mountains in the background. There's all kinds of stuff that aren't in Nebraska, you know. I mean, we have, there's trees in there, which there weren't a whole lot of trees in Nebraska, if any. Uh, but we also are known because of uh, Arbor Day as kind of a tree planter state. And one of the icons that's on there is a train. And so I get a chance to tell kids about the train system, about how there was nothing out here, uh, as far as what uh, we know as lifestyle now, before the trains. If it was brought out here, it was carried in by foot or by cart or by horse. Plus, it had to be ferried across on a boat when it got to the Missouri River. So uh, when the train system got here, of course, is when we all started showing up and all the things that we know, furniture, housing, housing materials, uh, coal. Uh, coal was a huge, huge thing um, that they brought out here. Farm equipment, none of that stuff was here. You know, until the trains got here, they really weren't developing this land. So I've done a bunch of research and I'm putting it all together to do a musical presentation. But this is a song I chose for the kids. Uh, with the train system. Now, everybody knows that we had cattle up here because they were driving them up from Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and, and they were on their way to uh, Montana and graze them. They'd bring them back to Omaha and ship them out east. Well, as, of course, the fencing started happening, they, you know, the wild cowboy days, uh, you know, kind of went away. I understand that Sydney, Nebraska, when, they, when the wild cowboy days were going, Sydney, Nebraska was six blocks long and had 18 saloons. <laughs> and four of them were brothels. So, <laughs> It was a wild, wild, wild west out here, uh, but uh, as the fencing started coming in. Uh, but the one thing people forget about, with all the neat stuff that the trains brought out, uh, one of the things that was very, very important to Nebraska's uh, past was chickens. And chickens would come in on these large trains, just like you see them now in, on, the, on a railroad, or excuse me, on a semi-truck, is a big cage, you know, the feathers flying and all the noise and stuff. So I guess it was quite a sight to see the train roll <coughs> into town with these chickens on it. And so, uh, if the kids would run along, because the trains only went about seven mile an hour, so they stopped at every town that they came to, and so people, the kids would come along and pick up feathers, and it was quite a ordeal to see the chicken train come through. So, with the classes, you know, we got some teachers in here, right? Carol probably knows what I'm talking about. Fourth graders are impossible to, you know, so I got to be on my toes when I'm when I'm giving this stuff. But so I, I, I kind of get them visually going here, and I tell them, I got to imagine all this stuff going on, you know, the chickens and the and the steam train. And I usually got one of these so I can do the steam train. So somebody's there always banging, bee, 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 can I play that thing? So and then I'm, I play the chicken train on this instrument. Does anybody know what that is? It's a jaw heart. Now the, the real cowboys used to carry these. It's not an instrument at all, it's actually just kind of a rhythm instrument. So, but this song, Chicken Train, uh, so uh, when, when I sing the song, there's a kind of a refrain that I have the kids say back. So I go, Chicken Train, and everybody. Chicken train, running all day, running all day. day. So that's your part. So, all right, you play with me. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> chicken train, chicken train, running all day, running all day. Chicken train, chicken train, running all day, running all day. Chicken train, running all day. Can't get on, can't get off. Chicken train, take the chickens away. A smoke and steam, a whistle scream. Smoke and steam, and a whistle scream. Smoke and steam, whistle scream, and I can't get on, I can't get off. Chicken train, get the chickens away. Train goes by. 
fly, the feathers fly. A train goes by, the feathers fly. A train goes by, the feathers fly. Can't get on, can't get off. Chicken train, take the chickens away. Chicken train, chicken train, running all day, running all day. Chicken train, chicken train, running all day, running all day. Chicken train, running all day, can't get on, can't get off. Chicken train, take chickens away. Maybe. 